hello and happy new year. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick, also wishing you a very happy 2021. Yeah. We made you know, it, guys. Right. At least we can stop freaking, you know, maybe this is the first turn towards sanity or I, I, I mean, anything normal or sanity. I I hope I so. Just don't you know get what? It. If it, you know, even if we have to go with the crazy narrative of somehow the fact that the date changed from 2020 to and it 2021, changes things, right? And now you know there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I'm down with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to spring. <laughs> <laughs> I start that like about oh early December, like it's almost spring. But I did want to mention. See, oh God, I made little notes because we can talk for 30 minutes easily and never talk about anything. Um, <laughs> So, in case you didn't know, because I do always think of spring, and I'm always on to the next project, you know what I mean? Um, did you know you can buy seedlings from the New Hampshire forest? Oh, do I know we can buy seedlings from the forest? Yeah. So, so my darling husband. Oh, yeah, that's who, where those who, came from. You know, he's the kind of guy who will, he, he's like, you know, we should pay less taxes. Why don't we order 40 books on how to pay less taxes. I'm like, but talk we just about spent more money paying than well, paying. that, or I'll be like, uh, how about, I'm pretty sure that's a red flag. Right. You're right. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that is not how you pay yeah. less taxes. So he found out about this and we have actually been buying from them. Yeah, I'm gonna, you get I your little to, seedlings in you the can, mail. You can go to nh.gov forward, forward slash. I don't know which way forward slash on the TV is NH nursery. And I, did this last year, but it was already too late. Like I read about it in the paper because that's how it is typically. By the time you read about something, you're like, oh, well, that would have been nice to know yesterday. Um, and I had downloaded it and then I tried to order and it wasn't, there w wasn't available. I'm already behind the game. That's because Louie ordered, ordered all everything. the trees in like, New I, I do think, and they're cheap. Like you can yes. order all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I, actually, and that was why, like we, you know, if, if it was one like of them 50 grows, cents right. or a dollar fifty, and you, and you think, literally get for some of them, you get like twigs in yeah. the mail, like little, um, what are I those know, called? I um, know, they're, um, I can't think of it. I'm not. Uh, uh, when, when, they have dogwoods. Which I think is awesome. You can get all sorts of beach plums and stuff, but I know somewhere in we here got the dog, dog is we... the um, the curly uh, birch. The the curly birch. I can't think the, the white birch <laughs> tree that peels. The oh curly birch. yeah, and we they're like fifteen dollars for ten, and they say they're like two to three feet tall. You know, so you're gonna get a twig. But the way I look at it is like, okay, but it's fifteen dollars to buy one tree at Lowe's and is going to be thirty or forty dollars. We we did it. We bought a I've, little forest. You know, we're on a hill and hmm. there's a little bit of erosion happening at the back, so we wanted to get a yeah. bunch of just like, you know, Something. sturdy plants and bushes that can sort of yeah. stabilize the hill. So we bought a ton. Well, that's what of I stuff. was thinking. I got you know the hill going up in the back. That's kind of I mean it's cleared and it's not really erosion, but it's it needs some love and if i start buying stuff at lowe's it's going to cost a small fortune so, so i mean it's always good to also be sort of thinking about the future and yeah. planning because yeah. that can give you a sense well of it's sort motivating of, and, when it's cold and you're like well this really stinks and you're like i saw on the pay on um, facebook this morning murphy's tap rooms looking to hire for spring or they're looking forward to march and open weather you know the, the weather improving and the well, deck opening and stuff so i'm like Okay, see, I'm not the only one who's like, okay, it's not that far off. It's only three months till, you know, March. Yes, we will We will remain optimistic over here, regardless of the fact that we are the ecstatic pessimist. Yes, we are. Buy my book on Amazon. Um, the, speaking of trees, on a different note, um, this year is different a little bit for people. Um, if you had a live tree and you need to dispose of it, the city is only picking up trees one week this year. Um, that's the week of January 17th, which I thought was kind of late. But there must, you know, so don't put your dead tree out at the curb now because if it snows, it's going to get buried under the snow bank, you know, just leave it in your wherever in your backyard or whatever. And then the week of January 17th, I believe the same day as your trash pickup, they will come along and mm, scoop we up had the a, dead trees. We had a long, not trash pickup situation and it our plowing I, has been really questionable and I heard our property taxes are going oh, up. They always go up. And, you know. They're going so. up more than they said they were going up. Well, yes. Because the the city um, spent, no, they overestimated revenues. I know that's how they do it. That's what happens. They they estimate the revenues and they said, oh, we're going to get all this money. I mean, we could say that maybe they expenses were increased or whatever because of the COVID situation, but 
the budget for that this is all based on was back in May when this was already happening. So it's not like you can say it was voted on in 2019 and oh my God, we never caught up. Um, and maybe just crazy concept when we close things like the library, maybe we should actually be furloughing people, but you know, what, who am I? Um, Manchester is looking to hire. Did you read that? Mm -mm. Okay, so you're good. No, I, I got, you're, so I did read the paper this morning for the show, but I will tell you maybe from like a week before yeah, Christmas. Isn't that funny? I, I, was, I tend to back off and not follow. I'm like, what's going well, on it's, it's not that, but I was just, you know, I'm getting sort of really, really, really frustrated yep. with the, the level of propaganda, yep. sustained level of propaganda and nonsense and this, you know, just pervasive message of fear and isolation yep. and darkness and like all yep. this like stuff. It's not good for our health. No. You know, if anyone out there, you know, if government officials actually cared about you, they could be telling you to do things that would make you right. healthier under these circumstances. Well, we've talked about crazy, not healthy things. So I was reading online today somewhere. So now Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, just so you know, has been under pretty much a lockdown That's since, crazy. well, the the newest lockdown, December 2nd, basically telling people just stay home, period. Like you're not yeah. supposed to leave your house, right? So why their COVID numbers are con continuing to go up is beyond me because if everybody's home and, not, okay, so that, and that lockdown's not actually oh. mitigating. But now today I read the Los Angeles um, EMS is instructing their re first responders not to transport patients who they don't think can make it to the hospital because they want to they want to um you know make sure they're saving the oxygen supplies for those who can survive i was See? like what that, first of all how are you still having so many sick people if everybody's locked in their homes this is why all this makes me crazy how, how is like, it spreading but then it's also you know i mean who's, and and it's possible that in a big city and, and I think that's really important for people to understand. We're not as well. a big city. We New Hampshire is not a big anything. You know, like, like like there are different geographic regions with different things yeah. that will influence stuff. So this notion that we should have a global or a, a, a national response to any of this is ridiculous. Right. In New Hampshire, more than 80% of all deaths have been in long-term yep. care facilities. Yep. And did you see this? There was seven people that a whistleblower nurse claims received the COVID vaccine last week and they all died. And Not yes, in New Hampshire. Though. In New oh. Hampshire. Eek. Yes. I don't know. I, that's the first time I've heard that. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, it's being reported in alternate media, and I haven't actually researched right, it's it real. myself. I, I believe it's real. You right. know, it's just a question of how it's going to be right. spun, because that's the well, thing, right? Everything is now... Well, it, it is true. 80% of, like, that last like week... Florida is open, and California right. is closed. And, I'm like, how... Well, and, and there was a, somebody... Come, California were outraged is last week because somebody thought it was important to rank the states based on the percentage of their deaths in long-term care facility. And there were people who were outraged that New Hampshire was number one in the highest percentage of deaths in long-term care. And But it, they, all it made me realize is that people can't disseminate, like they can't think because when I read that headline, I thought, well, of course we have the highest number because we have so few people dying outside of the nursing home right. situation. And the reason people are dying in the nursing home situation is welcome to reality, people in nursing homes die. And 80% of our deaths in New Hampshire have been in long-term care facilities. And two thirds of all the New Hampshire deaths have been beyond the, the age of life expectancy. Yep. So 80 years or older, two thirds of the people who died in New Hampshire. I'm not discounting anybody. Nobody wants to see their grandfather die. Nobody wants to see their elderly. Nobody wants to see people die. But grandfathers but people die, die and grandmothers die. And they and die in nursing homes away. a lot. It is, it, is, it is a natural process. And the real question, and the reason why I won't shut up about this, is we are staring down the barrel of medical tyranny. Because yeah. if we allow this to happen, I mean, is this going to be our new normal? I hate 
that term for every time there's a flu season? Is it just going to be when it's coronaviruses that are new? Uh, the fact that we're now saying, oh, even the people who are receiving the vaccine still have, have to, to wear, wear masks, still have to um, self-isolate, still have to. So a, what is the a point? Good, <laughs> a good point of reference for people, because when you see all the headlines, it is very overwhelming because it sounds like oh good good but that's what they're trying to do it is fear mongering in new hampshire because that's where we are (laughs) three and a half percent i checked the number this morning it's like 3.46 percent of all of new hampshire including people in nursing homes including everybody have ever tested positive not been sick but tested positive for covid since the beginning three and a half percent of our entire population. So that means 96 and a half percent of us have not ever knowingly had COVID. That's a very high percentage of people who are not being impacted by all of this. But, you know, let's let's actually impact everyone's lives and and you know did you see blake's restaurant is closing down i mean the list of of uh places and businesses that are you know just slowly tanking and we're like i mean i don't think you know from from my limited knowledge i don't think blake's closed primarily in hooks it just blake's and hooks it blake's on the west side still very much open um the one in hooks it has been dwindling for years i mean this is probably just the one thing that just this is not worth this is not worth staying open for. Let's look at it that right, way. Right, but I mean, let's be realistic. There's most not, well restaurants or any until spring. A lot of places. That's the, a, the Panucci's down here. I parked in front of their window. New uh, new winter hours, which yeah. are very like limited, limited. and some days are now it really closed. Is. It's, so here's the thing. Let's say for for the sake of argument had we not had this response, right? We could still, and I think this is so important for people to understand, the government can still give us voluntary guidelines Mm -hmm. and advisories and be like, hey guys, we think this is the best way you might want to do it. Right, we're really emphasizing that we, we, the government, think this. But this notion that uh, one group of people can now mandate what you do with your life based on, you know, not even really an agreement on on what the situation is we're dealing with, right? Because we're talking about different people with different risk profiles and different fear profiles. And we cannot create a society where we are literally legislating for the scaredest person on earth. Like, it can't work that way, folks, because the question becomes it's self-ownership and it's body autonomy. And my question is to these people who are like, just wear your damn mask. And I'm like, when did you decide you own my body? Mm -hmm. Right. My body, my choice. You guys fought long and hard for that one. And so it's like, when did we say this is now okay that one group of people can well, tell you what so to do. This is making me think. I read also in the last few days, um, there was um, there was an article, and I think it might have been on CNN. I, it, was, it wasn't like a fringy. It, it was mainstream. Um, and they were talking about how Dr. Fauci, who, you know, everybody thinks this 80-year-old man is the single expert on this completely. If he says jump, we should just jump. <laughs> but actually, so, do yourself a favor and go research his actual uh, medical background. Right. And he said, because um, so he was inter- being interviewed, and he, they said, well, why is the number on herd immunity changing? And he goes, well, because, you know, early on, I didn't, I projected a number And I didn't think people would accept it. So I said it was a lower number to try to encourage people to change their behavior. But now that they've changed their behavior, I I lied to you. And I thought. In in order to make you do something that wasn't necessary, let's just decode what's happening. It was frustrating because there's so many people who are like. Well, you have to follow the science. And I'm like, well, you do have to follow well, the science. Well, but except but- the science became this magic thing where this was like, here's this new thing that doesn't follow any well, of the established science ever. Oh, we can't have herd immunity. Oh, it's going to transfer so fast that it's just if you look at someone, it's, you've got it. And it turns out literally everything they told us was nonsense. Well, and I'm, it's one thing to say, it's one thing to say, 
you know, we think X, Y, and Z. And then later to determine X, Y, and Z were not true. And now we're going to say P, Q, and R. But, and this is not saying that masks aren't beneficial for some people. But early on, they did very clearly say healthy people should not be wearing masks. Now, the, the argument is, well, they didn't want people to panic and they didn't want people to hoard all the masks. We need them yeah. for the medical No, community. because and I'm like, like okay. oh, we need them. The people telling you, you are going to get locked down. We're like, there's a deathly virus. So how about we take everything that will keep us alive so, and tell you that's for your benefit. So it makes it very hard for people to trust. And then like things with this herd immunity number, which this is going to sound really awful, but I, I do mean it and I say it facetiously, but Dan was uh, chatting with me yesterday while, and he said, um, you know, out of X number of people working in his development team, this many over the course have now at one point or another had COVID, blah, blah, blah. And this one guy he works with, his him and his wife and his children have it. And my response was, well, one family closer to herd immunity. And I, I didn't mean that flippantly. I meant that, like, I don't understand. I do believe herd immunity could be the end game without being the science, you know, geek. But we're never going to get to herd immunity if we're doing everything we can to prohibit herd and immunity. prevent yes. herd immunity. The the what the vaccine but did will you, well the vaccine now apparently first of all in the UK I don't know if everyone they heard about shut this. That down. So so Again. they started giving them that you know they have socialized medicine so they rolled it out. I will say this as an aside lot less scared about getting rounded up by the government anytime soon because if we learn one thing it's like whoa the rank and competence it's like no <laughs> one has to be too scared in the short term because i'm like you can't really pull any of this like tyranny totalitarian crap off they right. can't pull it right. off right the government's not that i mean effective. they have to get you to be complicit in your right. own enslavement right, right. which is you know the part where we're at right now but in the uk they were like oh we can't uh this is hard and, you know, of course the vaccines have to be at a really low yes. temperature, the ta transportation's hard, all of that stuff. So they were like, eh, we're not going to give some people the second injection. If you got the Pfizer, now we're going to give you the Moderna. Right. We're, I mean, it's ridiculously like, what? That doesn't sound like very <laughs> science. Follow the experts, Aww. listen to the, you know, to me. So I was like, wow, really? And then it turns out because we have these new mutant strains. Now, of course, with a virus, this is how it's supposed to work, when it right? Can't. A virus will always mutate. It will tend to mutate and become weaker because because as with everything, there is a desire for survival. And so it'll go, you know what? We can't keep killing our hosts. So we got to be a little less, you know, virusy and too deadly so that we too can survive, right? So so your spread will actually go up. Your mutations will go up. But your, uh, your deathliness death, right. or the, the, the danger the, of the virus starts to go down. So these mutant strains that we're hearing about, even though they sound scary well, and x and mutant, mutant you know. Mm -hmm. Is actually a good thing for the long haul, I think, because it seems like it isn't quite as virulent. Right. That might not be what they're telling us right now, because now it's like we have to keep going with this this fear mongering. So they're kind of like, oh, what's what's the next step, right? Like, how can we? What what needs to come next? So they're like, oh, this is starting to, and people are starting to get frustrated and to, you know, sort of, you know, say we're not happy with this right. this is destroying our lives literally right and so now it's the mutants now it's the vaccines now it's the you know so they've got to come up with this new sort of control play so it's going to be interesting i mean i think with the you know whatever happens in january with the president and yeah georgia and, georgia you today know. the election is today in georgia um they've spent almost a billion dollars on one this race, race. Um, well two bananas. races I guess. people if that doesn't tell you that government's too big the stakes are too high we need to go back to federalism we need to make america states again yep. um we just really need to stop going there's this one answer for everything how about there are 50 answers and then there are like 360 million answers after that just for america yeah so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of Georgia today. What do you think? I haven't uh, followed well, it closely. Well, I, I didn't. I know there's two, so it's two Senate seats. Yep. Uh, the Republicans have to maintain one to maintain control over the Senate. So, that, <laughs> okay. Um, I have no idea. 
Yeah. I really don't. I have no idea because I no longer, I mean, I hate to say it, but I no longer, it's not like, I don't feel it, that I'm just getting older and more pessimistic about it, but I just don't feel like um, elections and voting is the same as it used to be. It no. wasn't people who were concerned about the outcome of the election turning out to, you know, cast their, their ballot and make their voice known. It is entities from outside, usually that district, finding people and misleading, tell it, manipulating the outcome. I don't know. Because I, the stakes are so high, I are. think, you know, because, because look, what does it mean when we say government got too big? You're, all government does, it, government doesn't produce anything, right? So all it does is, is, is re, reallocating funds. Funds. It's, Your it's funds. taking, you know, money from here and it's giving to these people yeah. here, you know, and it starts with something like a corn or a sugar subsidy. And here yeah. we are in 2021, everyone in America is fat and sick. Why is that? <laughs> mm, it's actually the government's fault, but that's a you know conversation for another day. Actually, all of these things you can pull well, back to a group of people who are acting in whoever they they're not. It's not your on interest. Our behalf. The only people local people might be acting in your interest. You know, here in New Hampshire, anyways. Um, Acting in your interest, we'll have to talk about this next week, see how it plays so, out. Uh, Manchester's considering um, hiring a homeless services director now for a $100,000 a year gig plus benefits and everything. You, but it's not. don't worry, it's not taxpayer money. It comes from a, a block grant from the federal government because that money's just free, you know. And the requirements, I mean, I pulled up the requirements because I was like, okay, how, who gets these block grants? And it probably does meet the criteria, but here's the reality can we meet that criteria next year? Because if we can't meet that criteria next year, is this person we're hiring being told this is a one-year contract dependent on whether or not we can get another grant? Because otherwise we're just adding another hundred and say $50,000 to our city budget, which causes all of our property taxes go up be because we want to hire somebody whose job would be to work to, to I would presume mitigate the homelessness problem, but by that same action, if they're mitigating the homelessness problem, they're ending their own job. And what do you think the likelihood of anybody doing taking the steps that's going to eliminate their hundred thousand dollar plus oh. amazing benefits job? Oh no! Once you once, once like if, if it's in, it's in. I mean, we know that. How many times have we seen budget cuts or? or I we mean, hire we didn't. Police we we, for literally, something. we literally didn't even furlough one. Not one state employee and all of this was furloughed. No, nope. you know, so I don't know if the next checks are coming. I don't know. I, I, I never got, got one. I got my first so, one. Yeah, so me either. When I do so. My, supposedly when we do our taxes, I mean, we, we get this extra $1,200 that I never saw before, but they still haven't paid me my, my refund from the last two years. So who the heck knows? Um, so now I guess I have $1,800 coming. Oh, to I, me. I, I doubt we're um, going to see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that homelessness thing, they just opened up the Valley Street, right? Um, uh, the police, the old the police station on Valley? No, uh, on, or on, on Chestnut Street. Right. And that's, I don't know if it's actually open, but it's like 40 to 50 people. So the current number of unhoused people or whatever we're calling it this day, is um, hundred and about 155 active cases. So even though you might hear three or 400 people they only consider 155 of those active cases, which likely means that somebody doesn't have their own apartment and is staying with family and things like that. Um, so yeah, if there's 155 people that have no place to live um, and that shelter can take in another 40 or 50 of them, I mean, that number is getting down. That's diminishing it significantly. Um, personally, I would rather, I realize that this federal block grant can't go to a, any non-government thing. What's the irony in that? That this government entity will only give to another government entity. Um, because government because is think, the solution. I do think that for families in transition could probably use $100,000 more effectively than hiring yet another city employee. I mean, who knows? And, and that person would report to Chief Goonan in the fire department, but I don't understand why. I do understand, but... Why can't the fire department just manage this with the staff they have currently? And the reality is, is because it's a lot of work and they're expected to do a lot of things and they don't want to have to do them. I so mean, let's hire somebody else. And that's, that's not how government should Well, should it's grow. just punting. I mean, here's something I'd love to see. Maybe we can do a 91A on it is uh, 
how many people are already working on the homelessness problem well, and how much mean. money are we spending on it? Because by my last count last was, year, we were over $22 million, right. I think, for 300 homeless and, people. And, and why don't we it's just... It's not making sense. The, like, we got to do a, something new. There was an article in the paper about a woman who... who um, Run, and runs a boarding house, and I forget exactly where. I think it was Derry. No, like this one was in Manchester, oh, it and was. it was up. It wasn't in the North End, but it was up that way, and which was ir ironic because there was a sober house that opened there that the neighborhood basically ran out. So where do you think those people who were Oh, living? the posh people don't want no. to deal with these so things. You know, it's fine if it's downtown, the but house you know, they don't want it me, up there. The 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 house right our direct neighbor is a boarding house you know like in the sense that they rent rooms versus a whole apartment there's a couple apartments and then they're and they're very i mean they're it is not sketchy uh, you know they are yeah. they are on top of it the reality is is that we put too many restrictions on too many property owners and unfortunately those bigger buildings now are very past probably their prime um uh, but i i do still can see places where i'm like so that three floor building that has three or four bedrooms on each floor could readily house 20 or 30 people for like four to six hundred dollars a month. No, no one wants but to nobody talk seems to uh, want to reduce, eliminate the restrictions me, to allow that to happen. I, I forget if we talked about this last year, but there was um, so there was in uh, Peterborough, there was a tiny home yeah. village that didn't have the right fire equipment. And so they were shutting it down. And I, w I commented and I said, so where do those do, people you go? Know, and we wonder why we have a homeless problem. Right. And people are like, what? You just want everyone to burn to death. So it's first like, no, of all, but... can we just like, Get away from this idea that if there isn't a law, it's automatically going to happen. It, like, if you don't wear a mask, you're not automatically going to get COVID. Well, and, like, use your noggin. Not even just there's a law. Not every person has to live within the same standards. Yes, we right. should. You know, I mean, if you're if we're really concerned about the homeless and these people are living on the sidewalk freezing to death and there are people living in tiny homes in Peterborough running extension cords from, from tiny home to tiny home. But isn't that better isn't that than better the guy than on the, the sidewalk? Guy, you, know? you know? Or maybe maybe a building that can house 20 people in it, and yes, they'd have common bathrooms, and yes, they'd have common kitchens and all this stuff. But when we go in and say, oh, in order for 20 people not related to each other to sleep in the same building, 20 people living together as a family, it's fine. They don't have to have sprinkler systems. But if we're going to put people who aren't li related to each other in the same building, now you have to put in tens of thousands of dollars in sprinklers and so on. None of it makes sense. Can we just if go we back to common it. sense, folks? No, like, let's just, you know, d just take care of you and yours and stop worrying about all this. So other. 2020, we got one minute left. Anything? <laughs> 2021. Send us your, send us your resolutions. Uh, send us something subject matter i we got all winter to talk about all sorts of things i'd um i'd love to you know hear from somebody who says hey could you tell us about this i mean honestly folks i would just say you know look after your own yeah. health really focus internally think yeah. about what you want to accomplish and what you want out of life if you're not healthy get healthy yep. and switch off the news <laughs> that's all we got for this week that goes quick um we'll be back next week until then stay warm stay healthy and we'll see you next week Bye, you guys.